You might notice a theme from the thumbnail for this video, but we are going to be making a lot of faux holiday treats in this video. Gingerbread cookies, ice cream, hot cocoa. This video is full of them. And we're going to kick off the DIYs with these fun faux ice cream ornaments that will look perfect and delicious on your tree. I'm going to be using spackle in quite a few of my DIYs for this video. So I went ahead and picked up two of these containers from the Dollar Tree. You can find it in the hardware section. So I already made the smaller ice cream scoops, which I just showed you, but now we're going to be making some larger ice cream scoops. I got these scoops off Amazon. They came with three, a larger one for ice cream, smaller one for cookies, and then a medium one. I used the medium and now the large one for the ice cream. The spackling looks perfectly like ice cream. It's actually kind of crazy how much it really does look like ice cream, not faux food. So once I scooped those out, I did leave it for a little over 24 hours to dry. But before they dried, I did sprinkle them with a little bit of cinnamon. And as I showed earlier for the smaller scoops, I did add some red and green beads. That was the fake sprinkles. And I did put in a small cinnamon stick into one of our smaller ice creams. Now we are going to make the cones. I got this set of six. They called them Christmas trees at Hobby Lobby for $3.99 for six, but it was 40% off. And I'm going to be using three of them. And these are going to be our ice cream cones, not our Christmas trees. So I am painting them with the color Khaki by Folk Art. And I went ahead and just gave them a good coat on all three and then set them aside to dry. I placed a bamboo skewer in the bottom of them so that it would be easier to paint, but especially for this next part. So I'm going to be creating a waffle cone effect using some hot glue, and it's actually pretty easy. The only difficult part is keeping a steady hand to make sure that your lines stay straight, but you're just going to do diagonal lines all the way down your cone one way, and then flip it as you can see me doing right here, and then go in the other direction, and you will soon start to see that waffle cone texture take shape. The bamboo skewer came in really handy here because I didn't have to fully turn the cone. I was just able to twirl the skewer and then that perfectly rotated my styrofoam cone for me. Once the hot glue had dried, I went over it again with the khaki colored paint. Make some faux cherries to top off the ice cream. I took wood beads and painted them red and added some red sequins. The cherries are also going to be vital in turning this ice cream into an ornament. I took some of this red and white striped thread and threaded it right through the wood bead and knotted it, leaving a loop at the top that of course is going to be the area that we can hang on our tree. Next, it is time to start assembling our ice cream cones. I'm going to do one cone with a triple scoop and the other two are going to be double scoop. I'm just taking our spackle scoops now that they have dried and hot gluing them to the cone and then on top of one another and of course putting the cherry on top. The double scoop is going to start the same way that we did with our singles by taking that larger spackle scoop and hot gluing it down onto the base of the cone. Then for the two smaller scoops, I just kind of hot glued them at angles, kind of looking like a Mickey Mouse head. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any fun faux food items on your Christmas tree. Maybe besides a gingerbread man, I feel like a lot of people probably have that on their tree, but I also know some do the pickle ornament or some other crazier kind of food. So let me know in the comments down below what you have on your tree. Next up, we are making some faux peppermints. And not only do I have some smaller peppermints to show you, but I'm also going to teach you how you can take one of the foam pumpkins that are currently for sale at the Dollar Tree. That's right, pick up a pumpkin for Christmas decor. This is going to be a great larger peppermint. That'll be great if you're a fan of larger decor in the home 
or this is kind of already weatherproof since it's covered in cellophane, this would also make some really great outdoor Christmas decorations. But first up, we're going to start with the smaller item. I picked up a pack of these small styrofoam circles. I did make this peppermint stencil, but you could always freehand it, but I really wanted the peppermint swirls to be precise on these smaller ones. The larger pumpkin peppermint I did freehand, so if you wanna see how to do that, just stay tuned and I'll show you in a bit. Whenever I use a stencil on my wood pieces or canvases, I always put down a little bit of Mod Podge first. It just really ensures that the paint doesn't run. So I also did that here on the styrofoam circle. I'm not sure if it actually did anything, but when I did remove the stencil, the lines were very crisp. So I'm not sure if it was just the texture of the styrofoam or because I laid down that Mod Podge. Then I took the color Crimson by Waverly to fill in those peppermint stripes and added a little bit of this red glitter glue from the Dollar Tree. I figured the more glitter, the better during the Christmas season. So I laid that down on top and left it to dry before peeling the stencil off. I purchased a roll of Dollar Tree clear wrap and I am using this to create the candy wrapper for my peppermint. I laid down the candy so that the back was facing me and just taped three little areas, the center and then the two sides to secure that in place. Then I flipped it back over so that the front of the peppermint was facing me and using some clear elastic hair ties, I just tied the two ends so that you get that classic candy wrapper look. Moving on to the larger faux peppermint, I am taking one of the styrofoam pumpkins that the Dollar Tree currently has out right now. So make sure that you pick this up if you're wanting to make some faux peppermints. And I painted this entire pumpkin white. My Dollar Tree only had the black and orange pumpkins, but if you have the white ones, that will even cut down on your time more. So for this one, I am freehanding it. I again took my red paint by Waverly and I'm kind of just following the direction that I made on the smaller peppermints and creating these red candy swirls. Just like the other peppermints, I am laying down some glitter, but instead of using glitter glue, I decided to go with some of these loose sequins, of course, also from the Dollar Tree. So I put down a little bit of Mod Podge to act as the adhesive and sprinkled on that glitter. Then again, doing the same thing as the smaller pumpkins, flipping it so the back of the peppermint faces me and adding a little bit of tape before flipping the peppermint back over and creating those candy wrapper ends using some clear elastics. It is a little bit harder on the larger pumpkin just because that clear wrap is of course going to be longer, but don't worry at the end, I do take my scissors and trim it down a little so we don't have these super long ends. Let me know in the comments down below which peppermints you are most likely to recreate. The smaller ones that you can pop into your Christmas tree or maybe the larger ones you can use for some outdoor decor. The next DIY is actually a suggestion from one of my amazing subscribers. I read every single comment on my videos and all of you have some great ideas and suggestions that I love reading. They are very inspiring to me. So thank you to my great subscriber who suggested that I make some snowmen out of clay. I took it a little step further to make it into the faux food category. So we are going to jump into making some clay marshmallows Marshmallows. These are really easy to make. I just rolled it into a ball and then from the ball formation just used my fingers to shape out the edges of the ball and make it more into that square marshmallow shape. I let the snowman marshmallows dry for 48 hours before continuing on to painting their faces. I used black paint for the coal eyes and the smile and then I went in with some orange paint for our carrot nose and then let these dry overnight. The clay was almost completely dry after 48 hours, but I did give it another 24 hours to really just make sure that everything was dry before I started styling our snowman marshmallows. The first way to style these is in a mug with some hot cocoa. 
to not use up all of my hot cocoa packets. These were actually expired from about two or three years ago, I think, but they were expired. So instead of throwing them out, I decided to use them in this DIY, but just to not use quite as much because I might want to use it for other staging purposes. I did put down a part of an empty paper towel roll, and then I made a little lid for it out of cardstock so that I could cover the top up with the hot cocoa powder. This was just a way so I didn't have to use quite as many hot cocoa packets. And then I styled the marshmallows on top, just like you would with a cup of real hot cocoa. A second way to style these snowmen marshmallows is using this glass gumball machine that I got from the dollar spot section of Target. And I filled up the bottom and about the middle section with some of this filling that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I thought it made a really great faux snow. And then I just layered all of our marshmallow snowmen down in there before placing the lid back on. As a further embellishment, I'm taking some of this frayed ribbon in a neutral color and tying it around the gumball machine. And I also grabbed a wood snowflake from the Dollar Tree. They're actually stickers that come on a pack with some other cute winter decor like Christmas trees and some gold stars. The last way that I'm going to show you how to style these snowman marshmallows is as a Christmas ornament. So I grabbed this sled ornament from the Dollar Tree. I don't remember seeing them last year, so they might be new or maybe my Dollar Tree just didn't get them in. And I placed all of the snowman marshmallows inside the sled. Of course, use some hot glue or some other type of adhesive if you're going to hang it on your tree. Let me know in the comments down below which of the three is your favorite way to style the snowman marshmallows. Moving into some more traditional Christmas faux food, we're going to begin decorating some gingerbread men and women. Starting off with making our very own gingerbread man using one of the wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I know that they had these last year, but I could not get my hands on them. So if you see them at your Dollar Tree, make sure to pick them up because they're at least hard for me to find. So I'm going to start off by painting him and I started off with a lighter color brown. It was the same khaki color that I used on the ice cream cones, but I didn't really like this. I didn't think it looked very gingerbread man like. So I added in a little bit of a darker brown. I added the burnt umber color from Apple Barrel. For the accents on our gingerbread man, I'm taking the color Crimson by Waverly and adding that to his face, his peppermint bow tie, and his buttons. I also added in some details around his face and also some of that glitter glue that I used earlier on the peppermints onto his buttons so they had a little bit of a shine to it. We're going to make some faux icing using spackle from the Dollar Tree, again found in the hardware section. And to put this in the piping bag, I added probably about three tablespoons of water just to make the spackling a little bit more runny so it wasn't quite so thick. And then I cut a small hole into my plastic bag and was able to pipe this faux frosting all around my gingerbread man. I let the spackle or faux frosting dry for 24 hours before I went back in with a smaller brush and that same crimson color to accent his sleeves and down by his feet. And then I used the piping bag again to add some little drops to kind of mimic gumdrops. And I did put the bag with the wet spackling in a Ziploc bag and that kept overnight. It didn't harden or anything. So I'm not sure if you kept it longer in my might harden, but at least for 24 hours, I was able to keep it intact so that I could reuse it when I went back in for those gumdrop buttons. Now that we have our gingerbread man, it's only right that we make our gingerbread woman. So using one of the galvanized caps from the Dollar Tree, I made this gingerbread girl that you could either use as hanging decor or make it as an ornament that you can place in your tree. Using the same color combo of the Umber by Apple Barrel, as well as that lighter khaki color, I coated the entire intersection of our galvanized bottle cap. 
Before going in with black paint, I used a Sharpie so that it was easier to draw out the eyes and the smile on my gingerbread girl. And then off camera, I did go back in with a smaller detailing brush and some black paint to go over that face. Exactly like I did previously with our gingerbread man, I'm using the spackling in a piping bag. My camera did die, but I did the exact same technique that I did with the gingerbread man. But while the spackling was still a little bit wet, I did sprinkle some faux snow from Dollar Tree on it to kind of give it that sugary looking effect. Then I went in with some pink paint to make the cheeks on our gingerbread girl and her nose before taking one of my white markers from the Dollar Tree and going in to add some details around her eyes. I took this larger red gingham pattern ribbon from the Dollar Tree and cut off the wire that was on the edges before cutting down the center so I had a thinner, smaller ribbon to work with. I also pulled at the edges so that they were a little bit more frayed and kind of had more of like a raggedy Ann vibe before making a bow and placing that onto my gingerbread girl's head. I decided that I'm going to use this as an ornament on my tree, so I added it back on the jute hanger that it came with and then added the hot glue to adhere the bow to the top of our gingerbread girl's head. I have also seen some other people on Pinterest turn this into a snowman face, which I also think is really cute. This is a snowman muffin tin and I am planning to leave this up all winter long. I hate taking down the Christmas decorations, but it's always fun when you get to put up some cute snowmen. I started off this DIY by grabbing one of the muffin tins from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using paint, cinnamon, and Mod Podge on this. So first I grabbed some sandpaper and just roughed up the surface a little bit. Now I'm moving on to creating a faux rusting effect. Now you could just take a muffin tin that you have around your house if it is rusty, but I didn't have one so we're going to create the effect of rust because I don't have the months and time it would take for this to actually rust on its own. So to create this, I took cinnamon, Mod Podge, and a bit of brown paint. I don't know if you could tell, but I accidentally spilled the entire thing almost of cinnamon. Luckily, this was cinnamon from the Dollar Tree and it was a pretty big container, but I did not mean to spill that much. You don't need that much cinnamon. That was definitely on accident. And what you're gonna do, I found that taking a paintbrush and using a stippling method creates the best faux rusty effect. And what I'm doing to create the effect is I'm dipping my paintbrush in the paint Mod Podge mixture, and then I am dipping it in the dry cinnamon and then just going ahead and stippling it all over the muffin tin, really concentrating in the edges, because I think that's where rust would naturally start to grow on the edges of the muffin tin. And then for aesthetic purposes, I'm going a little bit inside the muffin tin. We'll be painting the bottom section to look like a snowman, but around the edges, I wanted that to have some definition, so I added a bit of that faux rust to that area as well. Next, it's time for what I think is the most fun part of this DIY, and that's beginning to create our snowmen. So I took one of these small sponge brushes from the Dollar Tree and some white paint, and I'm just swirling it on the inside of this muffin tin. And I'm not being precise, I'm being kind of messy because I want this to look very homemade and rustic looking so I don't want clean edges I just kind of swirled the paint around. You can kind of see a little bit on the video but I did go in with just my index finger and a little bit of pink paint and I went and made one small little dot to kind of be blush on the snowman's cheeks but it's very very faint you can't see it too much. Then I went back in with my detailing tool it's a dotter tool you can pick them up at the Dollar Tree, they sell them now. And I went in with black paint, and then in just a moment, I'll be going in with orange paint. And I'm just using this to create the dot eyes for my snowman and their smiling faces. And then I added a couple of different embellishments to the top of this muffin tin, but first I took a bunch of these garland picks from the Dollar Tree and kind of created what I called a crown. I ended up using four different garland picks to create this arrangement that I hot glued at the top of the muffin tin. And I'm gonna be having this up probably all January and February in the winter months. 
So I wanted to add in some of these snow covered branches to bring in some of that icy snowy winterness from outside. And then I added two bells that have snowflakes on them to the lower center portion. And I also took two cinnamon sticks. I got these in a pack at the grocery store and I just hot glued those on opposite ends of our topper. And as the final touch, I made a bow out of raffia and I kept the ends pretty long because I do want it to hang down. So I just hot glued that at a slight angle in the center. If you're planning on just propping this DIY up on your kitchen counter, then you would be done. But I think I'm going to hang this off of one of my kitchen cupboard knobs. So to do that, I took some of this gold wire that I had and I just made it a double so it was a little bit stronger and made a loop and then hot glued it to the back of the muffin tray. And then once that dried, it was perfect and could hang really easily off of my kitchen cupboards. For our next kitchen DIY, we have this adorable hanging gingerbread man. All right, so for this next DIY, we're going to be using the foam gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree. And I took the foam and traced it out onto some cardboard. You could use maybe a box that you got in the mail, just peel off one of the sides of it and you can use that. So I cut that out so it was in the gingerbread shape and then I just took my glue stick and really the foam gingerbread was more so as a stencil, but I am gonna put this on the back of my sign, but if you're gonna be hanging it, you don't really need to have anything on the back of the sign because you won't be able to see it because what's actually going to be the front is this really pretty 12 days of Christmas scrapbooking paper I got at Hobby Lobby that has the red music notes on it and I went ahead and took the glue stick and glued that down too. Then I really wanna hang this in my kitchen off one of my cabinets, so I grabbed my red and white baker's twine that I have from the Dollar Tree and I kind of made a mistake because I should have put it down before I put the foam gingerbread guy on there, but it was okay. It was only using the glue stick, so it was easy to peel that back and then stick the baker's twine down on there so that I can have something for it to hang off of. Next, I'm going in with some of this white yarn that I have, and I thought it was great not only because it kind of made it look like icing going all the way around our gingerbread man, but also because it was a really great way to cover up and hide any of the cardboard that might have been peeking through on the sides or if I didn't cut absolutely perfectly, it was a really great way to just disguise any of the cardboard that might have been peeking through. Because this is a kitchen DIY video, I not only wanted to have a gingerbread man sign, but I really wanted it to look like a gingerbread cookie. So to add some faux sugar onto my gingerbread man, I took some of this fake snow and I just took the glue stick that I had been using earlier and placed it down on the front of our gingerbread man. And then I sprinkled the glitter on top and kind of pressed it a little just to make sure that it would stay in place. And then I waited about 30 minutes just to make sure that all of the glue was dry. And then I just shook off the gingerbread man in case any of the excess glitter came off. For a couple of embellishments on our gingerbread man, I took this little floral pick with berries and I added a little bit of white paint so it looked like it had been out in the snow. And then I took two of these jingle bells and I gave them a little bit more of a rustic touch by adding some brown paint. Then I went in and added the floral pick, kind of like where his bow tie would be. And then I added the two jingle bells down at the center of him. Buttons would also work as a substitute for the jingle bells, or I know that they make some of those buttons that look like food shapes. So if you had those, that would be really cute to add to this adorable kitchen DIY too. Today I am answering some of your requests. In a previous video, I asked if you all would be interested in seeing some larger 
outdoor Christmas decor DIYs, and I got a lot of positive feedback, so I took your advice and I decided to make two of these larger decor pieces. Both of them have a sugary sweet theme to them, very much reminding me of sugar plum fairies and nutcracker vibes. These will be great outside of your home to bring in that festive Christmas spirit. The first larger DIY that I'm going to be showing you is this plastic plate peppermint. That is one long alliteration, say it three times fast, DIY. This one was super easy. All I had to do was grab some plates from Dollar Tree in an old box that I already had laying around my house. First thing that I did was repackage this box. I'm sure it was from Amazon, probably. So once I had that re-taped, I covered it in some of this red and white candy cane striped paper that of course I also got from the Dollar Tree. And I did leave the back a little bit open since this is going outside and all of the items were fairly lightweight. I did weigh it down with rocks. So make sure to fill your box with either rocks if you're going to be using it outside or some sort of other item that will be able to weigh it down. Of course, if you're using it inside, you can skip that step. So once I had repackaged and wrapped the cardboard box, it was time to move on to the candy pieces. I am using three different sizes of the plastic party plates from Dollar Tree. And all I did was grab my paint brushes and really just get to work making my peppermints. I am using red and green on the largest peppermint. One thing about painting on plastic, it doesn't look that pretty at first, but once you start really working it, I ended up doing three coats, then you're really able to cover that plate in some opaque paint. Next was our middle peppermint, and this one's going to be more of that traditional peppermint. I just made a red swirl using red paint and one of the sponge brushes from Dollar Tree. The great thing about working on plastic is you can just take a wet wipe and kind of just wipe off all of your mistakes because it does take a while to dry on the plastic plate. Then I outlined my red swirl with some green paint and I did end up using two coats of this. Again, it's a little bit hard to paint on plastic at first, so you do have to go in with quite a couple coats. It also takes a while to dry the paint on the plastic. So after about an hour, the products were all nice and dry and I really liked how they came out, but I wanted to add a little something extra on our larger peppermints. So I went in with one of these paint pens or markers that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I did add some white outlining. Next, I moved on to our smallest peppermint and I'm using that white marker again to outline everything. And then I went in with green paint and white paint. And because these plates were clear, not white like the other ones, I did have to go in with one more coat of paint. So I did three coats of paint on these. Next, it was time to start embellishing our peppermints. So I covered an index card in some of the candy cane wrapping paper, and then I cut it out into a circle before hot gluing that down into the center of our larger plates. Then for the smaller plates, I took a bit of red tinsel, which you'll see in just a bit because I use it to outline them. So I'll show you how I found that at the Dollar Tree. And I placed that down in the center of the smallest peppermints and then also in the center of our larger peppermints. Next, we are going to begin assembling our tower of peppermints. I would suggest a yardstick. Maybe you could hot glue a couple of paint sticks together. This was just some wood that I had kind of laying around in my garage from different home projects, but those would also be some really great items. You could also take one of the large s'more sticks that the Dollar Tree sells and combine those to make an extra large stick, but I would really recommend just combining together two yardsticks. To adhere these to the stick that I have, I could use hot glue, but I really wanted to make sure that this stayed nice and sturdy since I'm gonna be using it outside. So I just used some handy dandy, heavy duty duct tape. If you're planning on putting this maybe in a corner where you won't see the back, you could technically skip this step, but I always like the backs of my projects to look nice and finished. So I am hot gluing the plates to the ones that we have already duct taped down. And that way from the front and the back, it is going to look the same. 
Next up, I am taking some red tinsel. I got this off of one of the hanging tinsel Christmas trees that the Dollar Tree sells. So I just unwound that and I'll show you that in a little bit. And I wrapped that around the bottom peppermint and then I also wrapped the red around the top peppermint. For the middle one, I decided to go in with some green tinsel, and this is what I'm talking about. These kind of items from the Dollar Tree are great. You can use the tinsel for various projects, and then the plastic form, you can always re-DIY. I tend to cover them in jute to create a rustic form. I'll pop up some pictures of me. I believe I've done it for Easter, and I did it for fall as well on a pumpkin. Then I am just covering that entire peppermint around in the green tinsel. I liked the green in the middle because it kind of gave a pop of a color away from the red tinsel that I've already put down. Next, I did take some miter shears and I just cut a little hole in the center of our box. That way the stick could slide nicely down into it. And again, if you need to weigh it down, you could use duct tape or hot glue. Luckily mine sat really nicely in there. And I finished off the look by adding some tinsel bows. And I also picked up this candy dish from the Dollar Tree, which I'm hot gluing onto the front. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on making this, if you would have it inside or if you would place it outside. I actually filmed this over Thanksgiving weekend at my mom's house and she does not have a covered porch, so that's why we styled it inside. But for me, I do have a covered porch, so I definitely plan on using this outside. Next up is a sugary sweet cupcake that I made out of Dollar Tree pool noodles. Also a little fun fact for you, one of my neighbors for Halloween this year did a Hansel and Gretel themed gingerbread house, but kind of made it haunted. So this kind of could have a dual purpose. You could use it as your haunted witch's gingerbread house, or you could use it like me for the Christmas season. So I'm actually starting off with one of these clear trash cans. They're from Ikea, but this one was just around my house. Then using a cardboard box that I had laying around, I cut out a circle to fit the top and then I duct taped it all the way around our trash can. Off camera, I did cut the pool noodles to size and turn them into a circle and secured them in the back with duct tape. So I'm starting off with my bottom pool noodle, which was the red one. Then I did a middle white pool noodle and another red one on top. And as you could kind of see in the white pool noodle, I did cover that with some felt fabric if you don't want the duct tape in the back to show through. Next, it was super simple. I just started hot gluing my cupcake pool noodle pieces into place. And you will notice that on that top pool noodle, I did do a false bottom using a cardboard because I am going to be placing a cherry on top. I used tinsel garland to cover the duct tape on the front of our cupcake. And then I used some of this smaller pink tinsel to just cover up the holes in the cupcake. Then I moved on to the top. I took one of the styrofoam balls that the Dollar Tree sells, some cobwebs from Halloween time, and then I used one of their holly berries that are covered in snow, but I kind of turned it into a cherry to make the cherry on top of this cupcake. To adhere the styrofoam ball into the pool noodle, I just used a toothpick and pushed that down through the cardboard. I stuck some bamboo skewers into the elf legs, which is an ornament that the Dollar Tree sells so that they were sticking up. It kind of looks like the elf is diving into the cupcake. And of course, there's my dog having to check everything out, wanting to see if it's actually a real cupcake that he can eat. And then he left when he realized it was just some pool noodles. To decorate our cupcake with sprinkles, I am using this filler that you can find in the baby shower section of the Dollar Tree. I hot glued those down into place. So again, it would look like some larger sprinkles on our cupcake. This would be perfect on your porch, but if yours is not covered, just make sure that if it's going to be raining, you might wanna pull these inside. They're not completely waterproof. Next up, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ornaments that I made that all have that sugary sweet theme to them, starting with this cake pot ornament. It is so easy to do and I think it came out really cute. These clear ornaments I picked up for Halloween when I did my bubbling cauldron DIY and I have tons left over. So I took the color crimson by Waverly and painted the inside of the ornament. That way I didn't have to worry about a mess. 
Once it was dry, I put the ornament back together and it already has the little ornament holder for me. So I decided to use some red and white twine or jute, which I got this huge roll from the Dollar Tree very good deal. So when you see them, pick them up because I know around the holidays they'll sell smaller packets of them. But if you ever see the twine or, you know, the jute, the different striped ones, definitely pick them up because it's a good deal. For the cake pop holder, I used a paper straw that I actually picked up off of Amazon way back last February when I did my Valentine's Day crafts. I added a red and white striped bow that I got in a pack at Dollar Tree and to really make it look like a cake pop, I picked up some of these faux sprinkles. They're clay polymer sprinkles that you can get off Amazon. I'll have them linked down below. I put down a little bit of Mod Podge. Don't worry, it will dry clear. And then sprinkled on my faux sprinkles. I did the front area first and then once that was all dried, I did the back. And as you can see, it dries completely clear and adds the perfect finishing touch on my cake pop ornament. Keeping with the sweets theme, I will show you how to make this lollipop ornament. It's really easy to do. The only hard part is that it takes a little bit of time to wind all of the twine, but don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do it. I cut out a circle from some heavy duty cardstock that I have. It's about two and a half inches wide. And after I cut that out, I laid down a little bit of Mod Podge. I didn't have any liquid or Elmer's glue, but you could use that too. And then using the same red and white twine that we used to hang up our previous ornament, we're just going to be wrapping this all the way around our cardstock. It's really easy, but it is a little bit time consuming, especially when you're using Mod Podge, it can get a little sticky. So I did this in different increments just so I wouldn't get too frustrated with the twine not sticking. And once you have completely covered the circumference of your circle, I hot glued a paper straw to the back. And I have a lot of these plastic bags because I sell items on Etsy. If you haven't checked out my Etsy shop, I will have it linked down below. So I already had some of this, but I know you could use a lunch bag, a sandwich bag, or some cellophane. And then I wrapped this like it was a real lollipop. I used some white yarn that I had in my craft room to tie the lollipop at the base of it and also as the ornament hanger. For the next ornament, we're stepping into the sugary sweet world of Christmas desserts by making a hot cocoa mug ornament, complete with our very own gingerbread girl hanging out in the foam. To do this, I used some of the wood ornaments as well as wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, a gingerbread man, which I turned into a gingerbread girl, a snowflake wood cutout, as well as these mugs that came in an ornament pack from the Dollar Tree. I painted them all accordingly and then hot glued them together. I think this would be a great one to do with kids. You can have them decorate all different sorts of items to put in their hot cocoa. You could do some faux marshmallows. And then once it's time for the hot gluing, you could take that over. Just like I did with our Grinch ornament, I am using the Baker's twine. I thought this kind of looked like a candy cane, so it definitely went with this sweet ornament. And I also added a little Baker's twine bow to the front of our hot cocoa mug. Okay, these last few DIYs were actually the first Christmas ones I ever did over, I believe, five years ago. I think the video only got a couple hundred views, but I really love the DIYs, so I did still wanna share them with you. I apologize for the audio quality as well as the picture quality. This was taken on a very old phone and just using my laptop speakers, but you can even mute it if it's, you know, getting on your nerves a little too much, that bad audio quality, but I still think that the crafts are top tier. I love them. So even though the quality is not there, the quality of the crafts is. This was way before I ever had a Cricut. So you can enjoy watching me teach you how to use the graphite method if you don't have a cutting machine. This by printing it out, rubbing the back of it in graphite or a pencil, and then pressing it down with, I used a pen, but you could use the back of a paintbrush too if you wanted. A Cricut would definitely be a lot faster. So if you have that, feel free to use it to write down Countdown to Christmas. But if you don't, it'll just take a little bit longer, but I will link this printable down in the description box below so you could use it as well if you would like. I'm not sure how well it will be showing up on camera, but when I remove the paper, there is a light etching of Countdown to Christmas. And then I just took one of these 
metallic markers, which is basically a paint pen, and I just filled in everything that I had traced. I embellished the cutting board with this bright bow that reminded me of a candy cane, and then I took actual chalk and wrote out the date. So I wrote out 25. You could start it now. I'm not exactly sure how many days there are until Christmas from this moment, but I probably won't start till December 1st. Then I took one of these adorable gingerbread stickers from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued it on the side. Since I'm going to be changing out the date every single day, I wanted to have a piece of chalk close by. So I took some chalk and wrapped it in jute and then I'm going to end up hanging it over the back of the cutting board so that it's always there when I need to change the date. With this cutting board DIY complete, your countdown to Christmas can officially begin. Speaking of sweets, this nutcracker I DIY'd looks like he stepped right off the game board of Candyland. Okay. The first thing I needed to do with this nutcracker, especially because his outfit was really dark, was prime him. So I just took a white paint and I ended up doing I think about two coats and I covered his entire outfit and his hat. The only part I left was his face. And you could see I took a sandwich bag and wrapped his hair up in it kind of like a shower cap because I didn't want it to get any paint on it. And then I just started having a lot of fun painting. I did a candy cane stripe on, I don't even know what he's holding, but I kind of wanted it to look like a rolling pin. So that's what I went with. And I just started adding lots of colors. I used paint pens to create different shapes and patterns. And really with this DIY, you get to be completely creative. There's no formula or secret or trick. Just have fun with it. Use lots of colors and have fun creating your nutcracker. One thing I definitely recommend if you're going to recreate this DIY is to buy some of these metallic marker pens from the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree. I only had it in white, but I was really wishing that they made a red too, or I had found a red because it would have made those candy cane stripes way easier. Then I tried to transform his hat into either like a cake or a cupcake, so I painted it white and added some scalloped edges all around. Then I took some glitter and sprinkled it over top. While I waited for the paint and glitter to dry down, I painted the brim of his hat a blue color, and then I started adding some sprinkles. I actually used a toothpick to do this, and I picked up some pinks and greens and blues and just added sprinkles all over his hat. This nutcracker was so much fun to make. I don't usually use such bright colors in any of my DIYs really, so it was really fun to be creative and think outside the box on this one. My next DIY is a sugary sweet cookie sign. Here's the first thing I did was take this wood palette from the Dollar Tree and paint it in this dark brown color. I saw this cookie company principle online and immediately knew I had to do a DIY with it. I printed it out, cut it, and then glued it down onto that wood palette. I'll also have this link below in case you want to do this DIY for yourself. It was a little tricky to smooth out the air bubbles with this card because there were spaces in the wood palette, but it is possible and I recommend doing it so you don't get those air bubbles. Now I'm just taking some white paint to distress it and make it look like snow. To hang up my sign, I'm taking some of this red wire and wrapping it around the back of that wood palette. I chose to do wire because I want it to look like a hanging sign, but I'm actually just going to lean it up in my tiered tray. And if I use jute or ribbon, then it would hang down. Now I'm embellishing it with some sparkly red bows. To help hold up the sign, I made a tripod out of candy canes. My last DIY is a faux whip treat, but please don't eat it. This DIY is for the eyes only. I took a mug I had at home and put it down on the cardboard to trace. This is going to keep the faux whip from falling inside of the mug. Then, so I wouldn't have to use as much faux whip, I took a ping pong ball, cut it in half, and hot glued it to the center of that cardboard. Okay, now it's time to make our faux whip. I took a tub of this lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. It's the only kind that my Dollar Tree carried, so if you see spackling that's lightweight, it's probably that one. I added a little bit of white paint just because my spackling had a bluish hint and one tablespoon of water. I read on, I think it was Pinterest, that you want it to look like a Wendy's Frosty, and that is exactly the consistency that you want it to look like. Then I put it in a pastry bag and just started circling all around that cardboard circle. This is also way harder than it looks. My hands were so sore after this, so shout out to any pastry chefs or people on Etsy who make this faux whip for a living, because this stuff was work. 
After I went all the way around, I had a little bit extra left and there were some holes in my faux whip mountain. So I took some more and just circled around any sparse areas that I found. Here is a tip for you when embellishing your faux whip. Use red and green beads, or really any color beads, instead of sprinkles. I did a faux whip with sprinkles and the sprinkles melted and bled all over the faux whip and it came out really bad so I had to throw that one away. But beads kind of looks like sprinkles and they won't bleed or melt into your faux whip. Then I took some little bits of cinnamon and sprinkled that over the top of the faux whip. And I found these really cute paper straws from the Dollar Tree that look like candy canes, so I stuck that in there too. I made another faux whip topping, but with chocolate looking sprinkles and a cinnamon stick instead of a straw, so there are lots of ways you can embellish this DIY. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I think I might come out with one more before Christmas, but just in case I don't, thank you all so much for supporting me throughout the year and have a happy and safe holidays. I will see you in 2025. And don't forget, keep searching, keep creating.